Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel. We are back with another movie reaction. This is Top Gun Maverick. This is now the sixth highest grossing film of all time, which is insane. And it's also apparently incredible. So I'm very excited to watch this movie. If you're curious, I watched the original Top Gun for the first time just a couple days ago on the channel. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that reaction, I will have that uh, linked in the description. Otherwise, it's like within the last like three videos I've made. So it's pretty easy to find. Uh, I had a lot of fun with that movie. Uh, I had known a couple things going in uh, about that movie, but it was still very entertaining and I liked it a lot. Some parts didn't necessarily age the best, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but I am very excited to watch this movie. So many people have been raving about this movie pretty much all year. This one and uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once have just been like the talk of the town in terms of the best movies of the year. And so it's just like, I've been waiting with bated breath for this movie to come out on digital. When it did, I bought it immediately. And now I am excited to be watching it with you on the channel. So before we jump into this, if you end up enjoying my reaction, please leave a like on the video. It means a lot to me and it helps my channel out a ton. Uh, if you are new here or you find yourself coming back often, hit subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. Uh, and then if you wanna see the full uncut version of this reaction, uh, consider checking out my Patreon. I post all the full uncuts over there in watch along format. So you just sync up your own copy of the show or movie and you can watch along with me. I'm trying to eventually do this YouTube thing full time. So uh, supporting me on Patreon is the most effective way for me to get there. Uh, so you're supporting me in the world, um, but otherwise let's jump into the movie. Ding. Ooh, they even got the same font. Oh, this is truly a legacy film when they bring in the same exact font <laughs> as, the, as the 86 one. Tom Cruise. On March 3rd, 1969, the United States Navy established an elite school for top 1% of its pilots, the purpose of teaching lost art of aerial combat and to ensure that a handful of men and women who graduated with the best fighter pilots in the world they succeeded today. The Navy calls fire pilot weapon school. Flyers the Flyers call it Top Gun. Ooh. Maverick. Miles Teller. Everyone was thirsting after him on TikTok. Jennifer Connelly. John Hamm, baby. Man, it's like almost the same exact intro <laughs> as the first one. Just this, oh, Ed Harris. It's just this slow montage of planes getting ready. All the planes look so new. Danger zone, let's go. <laughs> Listen to the howl and roar. Music by Lady Gaga. To the danger zone. Into the danger zone. I love the the technicians that are just stoked every time they successfully launch a plane. <laughs> They're just like, yeah. <laughs> Look at that old plane. I bet Tom Cruise knows how to fly that. Probably knows how to fix it too. He's not even acting here. <laughs> this is just B-roll of him fixing a plane. Oh, Goose. I miss you, Goose. Is that Goose? Oh, Miles Teller plays Goose's kid. Old Kawasaki. Ooh, is that a blackbird? We've been ordered to stand down. The scrap in the program. Oh no. Why? What if they hit Mach 10? Mach 10? Yeah. Let's give Mach 10. <laughs> Yes. He's practically like 
getting ready to go to space. Now remember, the contract threshold was Mach 10. Not 10.1, not 10.2, Mach 10. Let's hit 11, baby. Ready left engine start. Ready right engine start. Fellas for taxi. We are ready for taxi. We're ready for taxi. Tower is dark star. We're ready for takeoff. Requesting an unrestricted climb to six. Ooh, zero and they're there. Oh, this is the a shot from the trailer where they blow up the set. Oh, Ed Harris plays this guy. It's not too late to stop, buddy. You know what happens to you if you go through with this. Yeah. He doesn't care. I know what happens to everyone else if I don't. Yeah, everyone else loses their jobs. Well, I mean, I guess they're all military, so they just get reassigned to somewhere else, but still. I mean, I'm guessing he gets in trouble, because the whole plot of this movie is that he has to train nice, new guys. One last ride. So, soon, they get shut down. Tom Cruise is probably actually flying this plane. destroyed the set right there. Incredible. Dude, he's straight up like going to space. Is that Mach 7? Pushing 8? Flight data? Receiving? Data's good. Mach 9. He's the fastest man alive. And he's turning doing that as well? That's wild. I feel like your plane would rip apart gonna go all the way around the world probably talk to me goose Oof. talk to me goose nine one yeah it's catching on fire windshield have caution Ooh, this reminds me of the light year trailer <laughs> insane already oh my god cinematically this is beautiful come on hit it come on sweetheart just a little more just a little 9.9 .9, baby let's go come on come on hit it hit that shit Yeah, suck his dick, Ed Harris. <laughs> Let's go! Try and shut us down early? I don't think so. Keep climbing. Keep going. Oh, don't do it. Don't send it. Do it. Just... Send it. He's gonna blow up the plane, but send it. <laughs> Holy shit. He's gonna blow up like a trillion dollar plane. You're gonna have to eject at Mach 10. You got some balls, stick jockey. Yeah, stick jockey. I'll give you that. Go Mach 10.5. No, oh, no, everything's breaking. <laughs> oh, it's like a spaceship coming back down to Earth. Like an alien spaceship. He just blew up a six trillion dollar plane hey he proved that he could do it though where am I Russia uh. <laughs> what an answer from that kid earth I want him on the road to North Island within the hour You've been called back to Top Gun. Dang right. You are dismissed, Captain. <laughs> Dang right. <laughs> He's like, the end what? is inevitable, Maverick. <laughs> He's like, I am not 
getting discharged? <laughs> Maybe so, sir. But not today. Not today. What do we say to the God of Death? Not today. Oh, look at them. Look at them. Voice man. He looks so old. Well, it's been a while since I've flown an F-18 and... We don't want you to fly it. <laughs> we want you to teach it. Gotcha. Gotcha. We recalled 12 Top Gun graduates from their squadrons. We want you Man, to go down to six. Right? That's him? That's Miles Teller? You don't have to take this job. But let me be clear. This will be your last post, Captain. You fly for Top Gun, or you don't fly for the Navy ever again. Oof. That's a... I think that's a deal breaker. I think he will choose flying. Well, you've got to be kidding me. Pete. Howdy. Penny? Penny. I don't remember her. Was she in the original? I think this is it. Come on, Pete. You've been saying that as long as I've known you. You said it after they busted you for taking me on a joyride in that F-18. Mm. And the next thing I know, you're off to Bosnia. Then Iraq. Both times. Okay, so they have a romantic history. I don't know why okay. I don't remember her character. I literally watched the first one three days ago. <laughs> you look good. Was she in the first one? How do I not remember this? What do we have here? If it ain't Phoenix. Who are your friends? Payback. Fanboy. Hey, Coyote. Hey. Payback and fanboy? When did you get in? What's up, man? I've been here the whole time. What do they call you? Bob? No, your call sign. Uh, Bob, please say it's Bob. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <clears throat> of course, he walks in cool as hell. Hangman, the only place you'll lead anyone is an early grave. Whew. Fight. Okay, so Hangman's the popular one. Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they gonna get to teach us? It's been declined. Mm. Unplugs the jukebox. Rules are rules, Pete. singing that song. What a thrill. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Oh, and he sang that song with him as a child. Sad, sad day. Oh, no. Sad, sad. His exploits are legendary. And he's considered to be one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced. What he has to teach you they're all mad. They're like, God damn it. <laughs> Pete Mitchell. Call sign, Maverick. 
Today we'll start with what you only think you know. You show me what you're made of. Rooster. Bradley. Lieutenant Bradshaw. Yes, sir. Let's not do it like this. Am I dismissed? He obviously doesn't like him. Probably blames him for his dad's death. Welcome to basic fighter maneuvers. As briefed, today's exercise is dogfighting. Guns only, no missiles. We do not go below the hard deck of 5,000 feet. Bow, 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 bow. So what's that you put some skin in the game? Yeah, yeah in mind. CSI Miami song. <laughs> Lights on. Let's turn and burn. Fanboy, you see him? Not beyond the radar up ahead. He must be somewhere behind us. Get phone again. Pull up, you're hitting the hard deck. Oh shit. That's a kill. Get bold again. That's a kill. <laughs> Smoked. Damn it. Oh, it was all fun and games that selfie, wasn't it? <laughs> Losers. Wanna know why we call him Hangman? Oh, wait, I got it. Baby on board. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> hey. Hello. Yeah, you're good. I'll give you that. Same as the old balls. That's a kill. 79. Just smoking all of them. So what's the story with you and Maverick? It seems like he's got you a little rattled. It's none of your business. Now where the hell is he? Classic. Come on, let's get it over with. Fight's on! What is with these two? <laughs> Rooster's got a little bit of a vendetta. How long you wanna go, Rooster? I can go as low as you, sir, and that's saying something. Past is past for both of us. You'd like to believe that, wouldn't you? Hard deck is five Yeah, that can't really be past for Rooster. That's his dad. <laughs> altitude. 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 Who's gonna be the bigger man? It's too low. Come on. Too late. That's a kill. Damn it. Same old Rooster. I feel like that'll be a big plot point for the end of the movie. Is Rooster willing to go low? Talk to me. What the hell was that? You pulled my papers. What? Who? Maverick. He pulled my application in the Naval Academy. Oh. Why would he do that? Doesn't want him to end up like his dad. Something you have less than three weeks to teach them how to fight as a team and how to strike the target. And how to come home. And how to come home, sir. Yeah, that's the biggest part for Maverick is they need to come home. Mission has its risks. These pilots accept that. So essentially, John Hamm's character is kind of going into this with the with the belief that it's almost like a suicide mission, and that's planned. Better offer than I was expecting. You don't say. I don't remember Penny Benjamin. I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured it out. Penny Benjamin was the admiral's daughter that was 
briefly mentioned in like one line at the beginning of the movie of Top Gun 1. That's, that's why I had no idea who she was. These Sams are lethal. But they were designed to protect the skies above, not the canyon below. That's because the enemy knows no one is insane enough to try and fly below them. Well, you will be. On the day, your altitude will be 100 feet maximum. You exceed this altitude. That's insane. Radar will spot you, and you're dead. So for today's lesson, we're going to take it easy on you. Max ceiling, 300 feet. Time to target three minutes. <laughs> Taking it easy on you. Oh, shit. Who is flying slow there? Why are they dead? It's my fault. Was there a reason you didn't communicate with your team? I was focusing on... One that their family will accept at the funeral. None, sir. Why didn't you anticipate the turn? Don't tell me. Tell it to his family. Up. The canyon's getting tighter. Negative payback. He's making spin. a big point, son. Them surviving and the impact that their deaths will have on their families. Because that's that's what haunts him the most about the, the first movie. You're not flying fast enough. You don't have a second to waste. We made it to the target. And superior enemy aircraft intercepted you on your way out. Then it's a dogfight. Against fifth generation fighters. Yeah. It's a tall task. That's no time to be thinking about the past. What's that supposed to mean? The Maverick flew with his old Lieutenant, man. That's enough. Or that Maverick was flying when his old man. Lieutenant, that's enough. <laughs> Enough, you son of a bitch! Come on! <laughs> I'm cool, I'm cool. Hangman's kind of a dick. I wonder if Rooster knows the true uh, parameters of how his dad died, or if, or if maybe his the details were kept from him, similar to how Maverick's dad died. It's come back. No one knows. Oh. There's nothing else they can do. Does Iceman have cancer? Or some sort of disease? Admiral? He looks so old compared to Tom Cruise. The rooster's still angry with me about what I did. I see. Please, don't ask me to send someone else to die. Please don't. Don't ask me to send him. You gotta let go of your responsibility. It's not, it wasn't your fault. He probably still blames himself to this day. And so he's taking on these dangerous missions and these dangerous test pilot positions in the off chance that he dies and gets what he thinks he deserves. The only reason I'm here is you. Can Val Kilmer talk or is this like a real life thing that they translated onto screen? One last thing. Who's the better pilot? You or me? Depends. This is a nice moment. Let's not ruin it. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think within a set parameters, Iceman's the better pilot. But when you have to go improvise, uh, Maverick's got the little extra flavor. <laughs> Classic. Classic. Except it's football. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, grenade. Making progress. Making progress. 
1999. Bob. Yeah. I love how Bob's the one wearing a shirt. <laughs> so why are we out here playing games? They're you building the team. camaraderie. There's your team. Bob, 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 Bob. All right, so we got Bob, Rooster, Hangman, and Phoenix. That's your team of four. I pulled his papers from the Naval Academy. Took years off his career. His mother never wanted him to fly, not after what happened to Goose. She made me promise before she died, so. Probably not. He will always resent me for what I did. Why should you resent her too? Oof. Taking that bullet for her. The uranium enrichment plant that is your target will be operational earlier than expected. Raw uranium will be delivered to the plant in 10 days time. As a result, your mission has been moved up one week. Oof. As you know, the plant rests between two mountains. On final approach, you'll invert directly into a steep dive. Your target is an impact point less than three meters wide. Dang. The first pair will breach the reactor by dropping a laser-guided bomb on an exposed ventilation hatch. The second team will deliver the kill shot and destroy the target. That's wild. Egress is a steep IG climb out to avoid hitting this mountain. Oof. You're pulling at least eight Gs. Nine, yeah. Minimum. Oh. This is Coffin Corner. Assuming you avoid crashing into this mountain, You'll climb straight up into enemy radar while losing all of your airspeed. In seconds, you'll be fired upon by enemy SAMs. You've all faced sustained Gs before, but this, this is gonna take you and your aircraft to the breaking point. Sir, is this even achievable? I think I know some trivia of one of these scenes. Miles Teller actually hits his head on the canopy. Where's my laser, Bob? Did I? Did I? It's no good. Sorry, I can't get locked. We're out of time. I'm dropping blind. You gotta freehand that shiz. Damn it! Missed! Blue team, that's a fail. Level out, Coyote. Coyote, copy. Passed out. Coyote. Coyote. He's gonna burn in. I'm going after him. What are you gonna do? Step out of it, Coyote. Come on, come on. He's got a lock on, so I can make an alarm for him. Coyote! 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 <laughs> bird strike! Bird strike! Oh no! Bird strike. Is she gonna crash? Phoenix Bob, punch out, punch out! Warning lights everywhere, hydraulic failure! Eject, eject! Eject, eject, eject! Oh. Immediate cut to Rooster, holy cow. Why'd you pull my papers at the academy? Why did you stand in my way? He promised. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Oof. Someone needs to set him straight. Oh, Iceman died. No. That's rough. 
Good old Ice Man. Sir, they have to believe that this mission can be flown. And all you've managed to do is teach them that it can't. Sir. You're grounded, Captain. John Hamm. Permanently. I don't know your character's name. <laughs> You're just sir. Time to target is now four minutes. You'll be entering the valley level at reduced speed, not to exceed 420 knots. Sir, won't we be giving their planes time to intercept? We'll be sitting ducks for enemy missiles. You will. Oh, he's showing them. He's showing them it can be done. That's Maverick. He's running the course. They need to know it can be done. He's going to run that shit. Let's go. Nice. Nice. Setting time to target. Two minutes, 15 seconds. He's doing it 15 seconds faster. He's a, he's a pilot and he's used to Mach 10, so he can, he can hit this. Goddamn insane! <laughs> Ooh. It's like the it's shot in Star Wars when the TIE fighters, or not the TIE fighters, the X-Wings come in in The Force Awakens and you can see the, the water plume behind them because they're flying solo. Insane. Flip and burn. Absolute insanity. Bullseye, holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. He hit 10 G's. So what do I do? You put him back in charge. Lives of my pilots and perhaps the success of this mission. Or promote him. My career. By appointing you team leader. Sir, I think the Admiral's asking a rhetorical question. <laughs> oh, making him team leader? That's wild. So I'm guessing when he said someone's not coming home out of this, he was talking about himself. I'm guessing Rooster guaranteed to live because they wouldn't kill both members of that father and son duo. Talk to me, Goose. Oh. Talk to him, Goose. Talk to him. Hey, back in fanboy. Phoenix and Bob. And your wingman. Rooster. Pick Rooster. Rooster. He's got to trust his kid, though. His surrogate child. This is what you've all been training for. Come home safe. I wonder if they'll have to... They'll get in a dogfight, maybe, and then they'll have to scramble Hangman to come back them up and save them. Because they made a point of being like, Hangman will always leave you hanging. You give him hell! I... I just want to oh, say... Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll talk. We get back. Oh, you can't... You can't say things like that. Because... It means you might not get back. It's been an honor, Captain. I need everyone to make it out of this, because if if they don't, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> Some. This is, 
This movie's so good. It's so good. God, this is insane already. Dagger attack. Tomahawk's airborne. No turning back now. <sighs> That's that would be crazy to see. Two minutes and thirty seconds in three. I'm gonna be two, gripping one, my seat. Two mark. Three mark. Four mark. Oh my god. I'm so nervous. <gasps> I wonder if, if it's an actual two minutes and 30 seconds of like screen time, or if they'll do the thing where like, it's not actually like they, the two minutes, whatever plays out over the course of 10 minutes. Dagger, command chief. We're picking up two bandits, single group, two contacts. Where the hell they come from? Long range patrol? That's no bueno. Tomahawk impact in three, two. Impact. Enemy runway is destroyed. Come on, Rooster. Bandits inbound. We gotta make up time now. Let's turn and burn. You gotta go, Rooster. <sighs> bridge there. Heads up, Phoenix. Fine. That's dirty. That's dirty. That's some battlefield type stuff. <laughs> the video game battlefield. Come on, Rooster. Oh. Talk to him, Goose. Jesus, Rooster, not that fast. That's it, kid. That's it. He's gotta go. He's gotta trust himself. Watch your heads! Holy oh, shit! Shit! Payback! You with me? Right behind you! <laughs> oh! Hopefully their suits have a water filtration system because I'd be pissing my pants! Oh my god! Oh! Flip! Oh! That's wild. Oh, that's wild. That's absolutely wild. I've got it captured. Target acquired. Bombs away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, come on. Stay conscious, Bob. What a dirty shot. Direct hit. Direct hit. That's miracle number one. Hot and damn, dude. Boy, yeah, he, hit his head. he hit his head on the canopy right there. <laughs> Freak it out. Oh. Third time, I'm dropping blind. Ooh, sir, I got this, I got Third this. Bombs away, bombs away, bombs away. Hit it, come on. Oh, you dirty mofo! What a shot! Let's go! Let's go! Hot fucking damn, boy! Ooh. Okay. Now scramble him then, because he's gonna need to save them. Warning! Smoke in the air, Phoenix, break right! Emergency Jettison! Dagger 3 defending! Dagger 3 defending! Oh! <laughs> God dang it! Oh! Okay. Oh Come on. Come on. Come on, boys. Negative contact! Oh. <laughs> God dang, this is insane. This is insane. Oh, Rooster, two more on your six! Dagger two defending! <laughs> I'm at 
having a panic attack right now. Whoa. Just the cacophony of call-outs happening right now is insanity. Drop flares, drop flares. Hell yes, what a move. Oh no. Dagger one is hit. I repeat, Dagger one is hit. I didn't see a parachute. We have to circle back. Comanche, bandits inbound. Single group hot. Oh, dog fight now. Get him back to the carrier now. Rooster, you disobey that order. Sir, Maverick is still out we there. We are not losing anyone else today. Disobey his orders, everybody. He's gone. Maverick's gone. Hell no. Absolutely not. He pulled his shoot, I'm guessing. Those are the bad guys. Yeah, unclip all that crap so you can run. We need a signature Tom Cruise running moment. Right before a rooster blows this helicopter out of the sky. Come on, rooster. Hell yeah, bitch. That's what we're that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Let's go, rooster. Dagger to his head. Dagger two is hit. He'll live. He'll live. He'll live. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. He'll be okay. He'll, he'll be okay. It's fine. It's fine. Yo, hangman. You start flying. See, he pulled his shoe. He's Gucci. Signature Tom Cruise running. Every movie he's in. <laughs> that's how he gets it. That's how he gets his cardio. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> All right, clear the air, boys. Clear the air. Steal one of their planes. You're not serious. Yeah, he's serious. There's go. Oh, there's one. There's one that's perfectly ready to go. Okay. <laughs> it's happening. You just gotta. You just gotta act like you belong. You know. It's been a minute, huh, Matt? <laughs> Classics. We're going back. They're gonna have to take off with a destroyed runway? What's he doing? Holy shit! Yeah, oh my god. This is like a, a 200 foot runway and he's just gonna send that crap. Ooh. No landing gear for you. That's okay. If you guys eject near your aircraft carrier, you'll be fine. Mav, tally two, five o'clock low. Ooh. Those are the bad guys? We fight them. <laughs> just gotta just wave and smile. Just gotta pretend. Just wave and smile. Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Mav, can we all run these guys? Not their missiles and guns. Their new ships weren't qualified to beat these things in a dogfight. And they're gonna be hitting this in an old ship? It's not the plane, it's the pilot. <sighs> 
<sighs> Took one out. What a shot. God dang, that's absolute insanity. Splitting the throttles? We need Hangman in here. To be told, to be told. You got him, man. You got him. Taking a shot. That's bitching. What the? That was rad Holy as hell. Shit. What the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, what was that? This team's got their own Maverick. <laughs> whoo, whoo, whoo. This is like Independence Day. Damn it. In a dogfight with the alien ship. Do some pilot shit. Brace yourself. <laughs> Do some pilot shit. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd be saying. Holy shit. Oh, he, he hit him. Thirty shots. Oh. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes, <laughs> Let's go, boys. Let's go. Something tells me there's a couple oh more God. coming after him. Where the hell is this guy? Is that our buddy? Oh. Damn it! We're out of ammo. Hangman. Smoke in the air. Roost your flares. Uh. That was close. We need Hangman. We need Hangman. Eject! 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 Rooster, pull the handle! Eject! Oh, it's not, not doing it. Working. Oh, no wonder that plane was grounded. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Hangman, come on, where are you? Oh, you're goddamn right, Hangman. Please tell me it's him. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Hey, Hangman, you look good. I am good, Rooster. I'm he very, is very good. good. <laughs> How are they gonna land though? They don't have any landing gear. Okay. Yeah, fly by that tower, boy. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> Let's go, boys. Let's go. You got damn right. I'm good. <laughs> Woo! Everyone lives. Everybody lives. <clears throat> Let's go! Let's go! Game time, baby! Game time! All day? All day? Kiss her, kiss her, kiss her, kiss her. Oh, they're the new Iceman and Maverick. You can be my wingman anytime. That makes two. Mav has five. Makes him an ace. True. True facts. Although Rooster took out that helicopter, so that's one.
This movie's so friggin' good. Oi! You're supposed to be sealing. What the frick are you doing here? God, her car is so cool. Rooster, you gotta fix this plane on your own right now. Maverick's about to go smash booties. I want her car. This is Lady Gaga. I was like, I was wondering when Lady Gaga is gonna come into this. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. His name is Cyclone. Good to know. Oh, Danny Ramirez is fanboy. I swear to God, I thought Manny Jacinto was in this film. Is one of the background people. Glenn Powell. Ooh. Ooh, same ending, pretty much. Scroll up with the titles. Is it gonna be that? Yeah! <laughs> this is such a legacy film, it's insane. Some of the same exact tropes happen again and again and again. In memory of Tony Scott. I don't know who that is. Who's Tony Scott? Man, there's probably so much cool trivia. That's one of the things I, I wish, I wish I knew the exact moments to look for for the trivia, because Amazon Prime does a really cool thing with the X-ray where it shows all the trivia throughout the film. But when you're watching the film, you don't want to stop to look at the trivia. So you, afterwards, you'd have to like scrub through and like find it all. <gasps> Ooh, that movie was incredible. Oh my god, that movie was insane. That was so good. So good. Um, like, one, just from like an action movie standpoint, that movie was top tier. Like, edge of your seat the entire time type thing. Like, that's the type of action movie where it, you're not just like watching the action and being like, that's rad as hell. That's cool. That's awesome. Like you're, it's, it's the type where it's like anxiety inducing where you're one, you're also like, that's dope. First of all, that's sick as hell that that's happening, but it's also like edge of your seat. Like you're gripping your handrails. Like, like I was having like mini, mini panic attacks while watching this film. Just like, cause I want, I needed everybody to live. I wanted them all to live and I, <laughs> I was not going to be okay if they died. Like, the action was insane. And the way they filmed this, the way they filmed it is bonkers, right? Like, one of Tom Cruise's stipulations for being involved in this film was, like, no plain CGI. Like, ev all the plane shots were real. <laughs> and so they, uh, the trivia says they did this, like, month-long training course with the with the cast of where they where they flew in planes and like the way they had to like take hardware out of the planes to set up the cameras, like these 6K cameras capturing like what was actually going on in the plane while they were doing these wild ass maneuvers, like absolutely just bonkers. The fact that this movie was able to be made, like say what you want about Tom Cruise as like a person, <laughs> like his, his personality and some of the organizations he's involved in, but as a from a filmmaking standpoint, he is like God tier, <laughs> both in terms of like the movies he puts out, but then like his personal requirements when he's involved with the film that that he has for making sure that this the films he's in are incredible. Like they, the, there's no shortcuts with with movies that Tom Cruise is in and oftentimes they're pushing the pushing the limit and advancing things far beyond what they could have done before um you know 
in the way that like George Lucas with the Star Wars prequels was advancing crazy tech and CGI tech that way, Tom Cruise is kind of weirdly somehow after like hundreds of years of filmmaking uh, is is you know hundreds of hundreds of years of storytelling is somehow advancing the ways that practical effects can be used and and filming in camera and it's just it's absolutely wild like i don't understand like how how the how they were able to make this movie <laughs> this is absolutely bonkers like this is wild Okay, I knew Manny Jacinto was in this film. He must be like a like a super background extra, because <laughs> the they say in the trivia that that he appears in this film, and him and a couple other people were in Bad Times at the El Royale, which is also a great movie, super fun movie. Um, but I was like, I swear, I could have sworn I saw him. I was like, is that is that Jason Mendoza? <laughs> like, I knew he was in it. I knew he was in it, but then he didn't appear for like most of the movie and I was like, oh, maybe he wasn't in it, but he was, I was right. But in terms of like the story of this film, we got Maverick going from being this like test pilot, you know, pushing things to the edge daily, you know, going Mach 10, <laughs> uh, you know, going from this test pilot to essentially what what should have been a discharge from the Navy, he gets sent back to Top Gun School to train a, a group of pilots for a mission that is essentially a suicide mission. And they, uh, and they picked him because he's the only one that's done all of these things. Like every part that is involved in the mission, he's done it all separately and now they need to put it all together. And so they're like, he's the only one that can train him. Like we got to bring him in. And it's just, it's uh, just the initial, the initial scene of him in the uh, experimental plane. Was, I think the trivia said it was like a, a Lockheed Martin uh, experimental plane. They showed this sticker uh, for their like experimental program. Um, so like they're, they're essentially building spaceships. <laughs> um, and he's going Mach 10 and that thing, like just the cinematography right away from that was insanity just like so good um like i can't imagine how how good this movie would have looked in theaters like i'm watching this i'm watching this at home um and technically amazon prime has the uhd like ultra hd version is what i bought but technically that doesn't come through on a computer um i would have to watch it like on my tv for the full uhd to come in um but it's friggin bonkers like it looks insane even just the part where the plane explodes is i don't know how he survived that but he did <laughs> um and he gets sent to this top gun school to train these train these pilots for uh a job that is essentially impossible and you know he has to like the the big sticking point with his character in this training uh thing is like the, the people above him are going into this with the idea that people are not going to be coming home from this, right? Like, they, they've they accepted that and they're kind of almost planned for that, like, right? They're like, we're just going to make sure that we get the job done. You know, the main, the number one goal is blowing up this thing. And if, and if all the pilots die, that's an acceptable thing, uh, right? You know, obviously a bummer. They don't want to intentionally kill any pilots, but they're like... The, if that's what has to happen to get the job done, we're okay with that. We're going to design it around that. And Maverick comes in and he, due to the specific nature of, you know, the first movie and all the things he's gone through, his training sequence is predicated on the fact that he's bringing everybody back. Like, it's not just about completing the mission, but making sure they make it home. Uh, especially, especially because Rooster's involved and he already feels guilty for for killing his dad. Like even though he's supposed to have let let it go by now and moved on a little bit, he hasn't moved on. You know, they don't explicitly say it, but in my own like head canon, I think that's part of the reason um, Maverick refuses to change the role that he's in 
right? Like he, he refuses to go be a senator or, uh, uh, you know, get get promoted. He, he needs to be flying. He needs to be in these crazy maneuvers. He needs to be pushing boundaries. Um, especially in that experimental plane, like he's going Mach 10, he could easily die. Like test pilots die. Um, and part, part of my headcanon believes like, you know, the reason he's doing this is because maybe on a, on a, on a deep level down somewhere, he kind of, he kind of thinks he does, deserves it, right? Um, he still blames himself for the death of Goose, even though he was cleared of wrongdoing, he still believes it's his fault. Um, and so he's, he's putting himself in these positions and, you know, that's why he's like, I, you know, you're going to ask me to fly this mission. And they're like, no, we're asking you to teach this mission. He's like, bro, bro, like I'm not putting anybody else at risk, right? Like he's, he's letting them, he's training them, but they, they're not ready. They, they won't be able to do it. And he's like, he's, he doesn't know if they're going to be able to make it. And it's, it's harrowing throughout the whole film to like, you know, they're getting up to the line of like, you gotta be, you gotta be ready. <laughs> and then they friggin' change like, like they're, they're not able to, to live up to the, the, the point they have to hit and planes are exploding and they're not making it and they're going to ground him. And cause they're like, it, you're, it can't be done. You're having them perform an impossible mission. And he's like, they need to believe they can do it. So then he does it faster than what he's requiring of them to do. And like, just that, just the, just like the whole thing train like leading up to the mission before the mission even ever begins is some absolute an anxiety inducing stuff <laughs> and throughout this whole time you know he's trying to teach them and the all of these you know trainees have inherent egos because they're all the best of the best at what they do um and then there's there's inherent rivalries between them with hangman and rooster they're they're essentially the new uh Iceman and Maverick, right? Like they got that tension, but then Rooster also has that tension with Maverick because he blames him when he blames him for his dad's death, um, to a certain extent. And they don't go into super great detail about like their life together after that. But I think, I think Maverick was heavily involved, right? In his life growing up, he was, he said he was trying to be the dad that he lost and so I assume he probably spent quite a bit of time with him growing up and then partly probably inspired by Maverick and more so his father he wanted to join flight school right and his mom made Maverick promise not to let him because he she didn't want him flying like his dad and so he pulled the papers and instead of telling him the truth of why you know he didn't want him to resent his mother as well so he's like I'll I'll fall on that sword. I'll take that bullet. And so he's just let Rooster hate him this whole time. And the the tension throughout that whole thing of like, you know, he doesn't want him to do this. Like he's, he almost isn't going to let him do it because he can't bring himself to lose him as well. He already lost his dad. He's not going to lose him. And, you know, Rooster also at the same time has this inherent uh hesitancy to go all out he doesn't want to be like maverick right because he know he knows that maverick gets people killed sometimes um and so he's like you know he's he's trying to think too much he's not willing to he's not willing to cross the line of danger right um because he thinks if he does that he'll become like him he'll become like the man that got his father killed um and so he's he's essentially holding back throughout the entire film until the end and it's just just the story is so good like and the oh, and the, the the willingness to defy orders which real military people probably watch this and they're like no do not defy orders <laughs> like don't do it you never do it but in in movies you do it <laughs> um you know maverick is shot down and rooster goes to save him and then he gets shot down and then they steal a plane and they have to escape and it's just like oh 
Oh my god, like it's insane. It's insane. Uh, and just the the whole movie, all his superiors are are doubting him the whole time like like you like you're not like you're not the man you used to be. Like you can't bring them up to speed. You're lucky we don't discharge you. Uh and the whole time he's just proving them wrong, proving them wrong, proving them wrong. And it's just it's brilliant. And then and then the 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 big shebang uh comes with the with the actual mission that like absolute insanity the actual mission right like they they're f flying through there at a trillion miles an hour they're flying under bridges like it's freaking battlefield and they're they're climbing and they're like losing consciousness and they're they're targeting through that little shaft with the bomb it's like the it's freaking star wars like use the force type stuff and then rooster freehand fires that freaking bitch in there it's like oh let go let's go and the the dog fight oh my god well not even the dog fight the moment the when they clear the mountain and they're it, like evading the sam missiles it oh, <laughs> that's ab so anxiety inducing because it's it's the moment where they're I think the the biggest part about that moment was the the cacophony of comms callouts that are happening and overlapping each other. It just creates like this hectic hectic moment where you're like, okay, like it's building. There has to be a pinnacle, like, and it's just the the some of the moves they're doing where he's putting on brakes and he runs out of uh, flares and he's dropping flares for him and it's like, bro, like the creativity in some of this stuff is wild and then they literally you know out dogfight two advanced fighter jets with an old ass plane <laughs> it's like bro bro even some of the maneuvers the new planes were doing were baffling it's like bro this is insane this is insane like it was so good it was so good and then i'm not even talking about the much better relationship the rom romance uh in this movie you know i i didn't dislike the romance between maverick and charlie in the first one at least in the second half of their romance uh the first half of their romance was very much some like toxic douchebaggery you know predatory stuff <laughs> to get get them together uh and and some cheesy cheesy dialogue in the first one between their romance where she's like I don't want anyone to know I've fallen for you. <laughs> and they're making out in public. It's like, well, everybody knows now. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, but it was kind of cool. They brought in Jennifer Connelly to play Penny, um, who is, at first I was like, who the f is this? Like, <laughs> I was like, did, I was like, did I just like not? I was like, I literally watched this, the first one three days ago. Like, is there some character that I just like, how did I miss this character? Like, they seem fairly prominent. He seems to know them. Like, what is going on? <laughs> uh, but if you if you didn't know, in the first movie, Top Gun original, they're at the very beginning of the movie, before they get sent to Top Gun, um, their commanding officer is kind of like yelling at them about all these flybys that they do. And they mention you know, the, the flyby with the Admiral's daughter. Like, so he took a, he took an Admiral's daughter on a flyby of a tower and Goose, uh, leans over and he goes, is that Penny, Penny, what's her name? What, what was her last name? Penny Benjamin. Uh, he's like, he leans over and he's like, Penny Benjamin. And she's like, so it's literally almost like a throwaway line from the first movie to add some character to those two guys and they bring her back as the main love interest of this movie and like the like weirdly they didn't even have to show us any like background between them you just kind of knew that there was some uh some chemistry there and some history there i literally had to google i was like who the is penny benjamin <laughs> um and the, i thought their romance was kind of sweet you know, there's some, a line about don't break her heart again, where like at some point he left her because it just wasn't working for whatever reason. And now 
they're back together and it's there that was nice i liked that a lot um all of the young pilots i thought did a great job you know miles teller uh, kind of like a renaissance for him almost where you know for a long time hollywood was trying to make miles teller happen and it just wasn't working out and everyone was kind of like wondering like why why isn't it working out and then you know he was in the fan four stick movie and it just it didn't work out and then he hit he was in whiplash and everyone was like oh damn miles teller's good <laughs> miles teller's freaking prime uh and then he stars in this movie with his mustache and sent it sent tiktok bananas <laughs> like he blew up on tiktok um for this movie and all of the other all the other characters did a freaking fantastic job ice or not ice man hangman uh was wonderfully douchebaggery throughout the entire film he was he was a mix i hangman was a mix between you know the the skill and kind of cockiness of of uh Iceman from the first one but also like the severe douchebaggery of Maverick from the first one like he he was the worst characteristics of both of those characters from the first one even though Iceman in the first movie is right the whole time and he's not even like a dick about it really he's just like he just pushes back against the douchebaggery of Maverick um but he was he was very much like a annoying like purposely annoying version of both of those characters and like hangman kind of almost was maverick from the first one like he's having moments where he's like bro you gotta go faster you gotta fly faster you gotta do what you gotta do i'm so good um and so it was just like he was really good phoenix was good bob oof bob bob's my favorite character just because his name is bob and he's just like the one <laughs> he's the one person there that is like ah, I just I just target lasers. <laughs> That's his whole role, is to target lasers. Um, he was great. Um, friggin' John Hamm, his Cyclone, I guess was his character's name. He was good. He he played the role of like the the stickler rule follower that's annoyed with Ma doesn't like Maverick because he breaks all the rules um, and wishes he wasn't there. But in the end, is is you know comes around to him he was great um yeah jennifer connelly was great pretty much the entire cast was very likable um even even hangman was likable even even though he was such a douchebag he was so likable as well um but just the the charisma that all this all the characters and the the whole movie had the movie just had so much personality and charisma and was such a fun time you know say what you want about military propaganda films but like this movie was bitching <laughs> oh god it's so cool and it makes sense that this is now the sixth highest grossing film of all time insanity insanity just baffling bro it was it was so good i i don't even know how to explain how freaking good it was and then by the end of the movie the relationship between miles teller and tom cruise is is mended and they're like buds now and working on planes and it's just like oh i saw some headlines uh, a couple months back that that miles teller is you know he's talking to tom cruise about a potential sequel to this film you know who knows how long that would take obviously not another 37 years because tom cruise would literally be like a hundred <laughs> can you imagine hundred year old tom cruise flying jet planes wild um no but yeah it might be a little bit because tom cruise has the two mission impossible movies coming up um who knows what miles teller is going to be doing but you know that would be cool to see them back plus everybody survived uh oh except for iceman iceman died i wonder if that's a so they made iceman have this like disease de some degenerative disease does he have like throat cancer or something where he can't talk um i wonder is that is that like a real life thing with val kilmer that they like translated onto screen or is val kilmer like is val kilmer fine and they just added that part as a character for as like a character trait um that i'd be curious about that he's the only one that died though um 
but it was cool to see him back. He looks old as hell, weirdly, compared to Tom Cruise. Like, was he older than Tom Cruise in the original? Because he looks really old. <laughs> and, you know, the wonders of Scientology, I guess. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. This was This was an incredible movie. I am so glad that I watched this. I think this is... It's up there. It's up there. I think I would have to say this is my second favorite movie of the year. Um, probably my second favorite movie in the last couple of years, if we're being honest. Um, I think the number one spot still is um, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Just the emotional impact that that movie had on me. I was bawling my eyes out for the last hour of that movie. I think that's probably the, still the best movie I've ever seen. Um, and its impact will carry through to me forever um but this movie i would say this movie's easily the second best movie of the year um and deserves all the money that it's making freaking insane that you know best movie of tom cruise's career from a money-making standpoint pro probably from a actual like quality standpoint as well um this and i think mission impossible fallout are close maybe edge of tomorrow I actually really liked Oblivion. I know a lot of people weren't super thrilled with that one. I liked it. Um, but I, I've been a fan of Tom Cruise movies for a long time, just through all the Mission Impossible films I've loved. Um, and this one this one is I, probably at the top of my list, maybe, for Tom Cruise films. So sixth highest grossing film of all time. This movie passed Infinity War. <laughs> Granted, Infinity War was the you know 28th movie in a in a in a sequence right so it had that both going for it and against it right like the average the average viewer might not go see infinity war because they're like oh i haven't seen the 38 movies before that why would i see this one um this one you only have to see top gun one to see it but you know it's just oh it's crazy i hope it keeps climbing I think it's technically still in theaters, weirdly, even though it came out on digital on, you know, Tuesday now. Um, just baffling, baffling how, how good this movie's doing, and I'm stoked. I don't know what else to say. Am I missing anything? I feel like I talked about most of the stuff. It's kind of tough to recap the story a little bit over the course of a two and a half hour thing without going point by point by point, and if I did that, this video would be four hours long. <laughs> I feel like I could talk about this movie all day, um, but no, yeah, this was this was so good. There are so many callbacks in this movie to the first one, which some people might not recognize immediately. I recognized pretty much all of them because I watched the first one two days ago. <laughs> like, there are some shots in this movie that are exact recreations of of the previous film, um, and and so many moments, so many sto like not necessarily story beats but scene beats like specific scenes uh there's a lot of like specific exact recreations from the first one which is like this is very much a legacy film um you know they, they use the same font for different sequences they use the same end title thing you know they they use the same uh the same little trope of uh you know all seems lost and then the douchebag reserve pilot has to come in and save the day <laughs> it's just it's just oh but they they made it they aged it incredibly well well the, well the first one did not age all that great in specific areas i think this one can easily stand the test of time and i i'm just so happy that i watched it but uh let me know what you guys thought of this movie down in the comments below did you see this in theaters did you see this at home it's on you can buy it for 20 bucks on Amazon Prime, uh, a couple other places probably as well, but I bought it for 20 bucks on Amazon Prime. Um, you know, let me know where and when you watch this film, what you think of it. Um, I would love to hear all your thoughts. Are you a fan of Tom Cruise? Are you a fan of Miles Teller? Are you a 20 year old girl who fell in love with Miles Teller because of this film? <laughs> Definitely let me know. Um, I would love to hear all your thoughts down in the comments if you were here still watching at this point in the movie put a comment down there i don't care what it is it helps the algorithm <laughs> oh man no um if you enjoyed my reaction please leave a like on the video that means a ton to me and it helps my channel out a lot 
Uh, if you are new here or you find yourself coming back often, hit subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. Especially if you want to see me react to more movies on the channel. I would love to hear your suggestions uh, for movies to watch on the channel or TV shows that you think are cool, maybe similar to these. this movie. I love action stuff, so um, very open to action-oriented suggestions. Um, but then, yeah, if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction in watch along format consider checking out my patreon that is linked in the description below i post full uncuts for everything i watch on the channel over there uh, so you just sync up your own copy of the show or movie and you can watch along with me uh, that would be super fun as well uh, but i think that's all i gotta say thank you for watching means the world and i will catch you guys next time